I love reading a study that makes me believe wholeheartedly that this variable is in fact going to explain a relationship that is intriguing and then it doesn't work. It doesn't turn out that way. And I think as scientists, some of the discoveries that we make that are most interesting are the ones that are non-confirmational, where we get results that we didn't expect. Nor should we add variables through a fishing expedition to see uh, if we can find something that quote unquote worked or otherwise massage, analyze data, and then after the fact, try to come up with a, a theory that, that tells a good story that we can then wrap around the data. You really need to report results accurately, whatever they are. I would say a study works when it's well designed and gives, it gives valid answers to important questions. The answers can be no, and that still, the study will still have worked. We owe each other to share because other scientists would believe the same thing to be true as they start their research, and if we leave that out of our report, we're causing other people to go down that same road without really thinking along with us, why didn't this happen? Okay, so are we, are we obligated morally, ethically, as a matter of scientific principle to share our data with others? Uh, some institutions, such as the uh, uh, American Psychological Association, have that as an explicit policy, that for a period of time you should make your data available for someone, to someone else who wants to conduct a reanalysis uh, to perhaps use the data in different ways or to verify that what was reported was in fact what the data uh, would show. Should we always report the source of instruments that we use, uh, particularly if they're developed by others? Absolutely. Uh, we do occasionally see in articles that are submitted to journals uh, instruments that are included and used for research without citation, and it's important for reviewers to catch that and correct that if it happens to be missing in an article that an author has submitted because the people who did the original work or who collected the original data, if it's secondary analysis, do need to be given credit for their original work. That's very important in what we do. And now it is, I think, a requirement that we do be upfront and forthcoming about where the sponsorship from our for our research came from, uh, because obviously if it, it in any way could influence the findings, the collection of the data or interpretation of the results, we need to acknowledge that we were funded by people with an interest in certain outcomes. And that just helps us to be clean about the findings and the interpretation of our research in the larger community. There really is a need for transparency in reporting the processes by, by which the data have come to be the data we have. I also think it's important to be transparent to help people understand good methodology. Uh, so future researchers, if they're going to study some of the similar phenomena, will also not only understand what you did, but be able to either replicate what you did in order to replicate the study, but, but even for future studies that may extend it. So transparency is really important for multiple reasons, and some of it is not just to ensure that it's well done or ethically done, but also that it helps us in terms of our future research. You do not, you cannot anticipate what value there is in full transparency, but the value far exceeds, I think, the, uh, the perceived threat on the part of authors that I might revealing something that's going to cause my paper to be rejected, I think actually people will appreciate the fastidiousness and the care.